Hey guys, welcome back to Recreational Sniper. Let's talk about positive compensation. Alright, so a few days ago, or maybe about a week ago, Eric Cortina on his Believe the Target channel on YouTube did an interview with Tim Sellers and they went extensively over this idea, this concept of positive compensation and how to actually test for it. And so ever since watching that interview, and I've watched it twice so far, and I'm probably going to go through it a third time before I actually do my, my own testing, make sure I've got my notes and everything like taken care of and sorted out, and make sure I'm not going to be doing the test wrong. But basically, uh, positive compensation, what it means is when you fire, the, fire a rifle, the barrel kind of whips up and down okay and this happens actually before the bullet exits the barrel otherwise there would be no explanation for why this test even works if the bullet exited the barrel before it moved this test wouldn't work at all so basically how positive compensation would work is in a series of loaded ammunition uh, you're gonna have some rounds that shoot a little slower and some rounds that shoot a little faster and you know that just has to do with your extreme spread and velocity and stuff um, and if you had really really good extreme spread and velocity like if they, each round was totally the same you know running the exact same velocity this test wouldn't work and you wouldn't really need to test for positive compensation you really wouldn't need to see if you know you could use it and employ it in your shooting so the way positive compensation works is with bullets that say have like a 20 or 30 foot per second spread in velocity difference is that your faster bullet will exit the barrel at a flatter line of trajectory and the slower bullet because it is in the barrel for a longer amount of time if you know if I'm saying this right the barrels the bullets going a little slower so it's spending a little more time inside the barrel which gives the barrel a little more time to whip and like you know change the muzzle angle and the muzzle angle is a little bit higher so that slower bullet exits the barrel at a little bit of a, a steeper incline so at a little bit higher angle than the faster bullet but because that bullet is traveling slower at some point down range it's going to fall back in line with the faster bullet and they're going to meet up and hit in the same spot down range now this may be way out there okay so an example of positive compensation or the opposite of positive compensation would be that your faster bullet exits at a higher angle than your slower bullet and so your faster bullet and your slower bullet because the slower one exits down here and the faster one exits up here they are never going to meet back up because the slower bullet exit at a slower speed which means it's going to drop a little bit faster as it goes down range and your faster bullet exited at a higher speed at a higher angle which means it's going to not drop as much as that slower bullet so the entire way down the range however far you're shooting those bullets in their trajectory paths are getting further and further apart okay so that is the opposite of positive compensation again positive compensation would mean that your slower bullet would exit at a higher angle than your faster bullet which means that that bullet that slower bullet that's dropping more that's dropping a little faster is going to come into and converge with the trajectory of that faster bullet that was launched at a lower angle and at some point down range say a thousand yards or something they're going to hit in the same spot even though that slower bullet started out at a higher angle you know a higher uh, ascending leg on its trajectory so basically how this graph would work is you would take six charge weights and you'd start down here with your lowest charge weight and you would shoot one 
and then the next one, and then the next one, next one, next one. And the way Tim Sellers described this test is uh, you would do these one grain of part in charge weight, and so that would give you a significant difference. So um, your lowest charge weight you would shoot here, and your highest charge weight you would shoot over here. So if you look at it on this graph, um, basically as you increase in charge weight, you're going to, your velocity is picking up and your bullets are going to hit a little higher, right, on the way up. But at some point, uh, if positive compensation is true, if it occurs, at some point your faster bullet, one of these faster bullets is going to hit lower than one of the slower bullets. So, and this would be that area of, that's your slower bullet hitting higher at say 100 yards, which is where I'm going to do the test at, and then your faster bullet hitting lower at that same distance at close range, which means at longer range that slower bullet's going to drop more and it's going to come back into line with this faster bullet and their paths will converge and they will hit in the same spot at some point downrange. Now the opposite of that would be your slower bullet hitting lower and your faster bullet hitting higher, meaning that your, your trajectory is already going in a different path here. And your faster bullet is obviously not going to drop as fast or as much as your slower bullet. And because your slower bullet's already hitting lower at the start, it will never con come back into the same trajectory path. It will never converge with that faster bullet. They're going to get further and further apart as the range goes on, you know, the further down range you get. So now talking about the type of equipment sellers, Tim, Tim sellers did uh, kind of talk about to make this test work and to really see it, you're going to have to have really high quality stuff like the best barrel action and that sort of thing and the best components, bullets, powder, primers and everything like that. If you've got like some subpar stuff, you're probably not going to get the best results out of it. So I've got a really good rifle that shoots really well. It's you know, it's not quite that quarter minute of angle uh, level of shooting, but it does shoot easily half minute of angle. Uh, that's my 6.5 PRC with that 27 inch hand lapped, you know, custom barrel and everything. So that would be as far as the things that I have to do this test with, that is the best rifle that I have to do this test with. And so that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to use my 6.5 PRC. Um, the bullets I'm going to use are going to be the Hornady 140 grain ELD match bullets. And I do plan on uh, separating those out based on overall length because apparently overall length is better than, you know, based O jive or even weight sorting, at least from what I've you know, from what I've read and the, the research on that. So overall length is the way I'm going to sort those. I'm going to use, uh, as far as primers go, I'm going to use Federal Gold Metal Match uh, 215 Magnum primers. And I'm going to use US 869 powder. And I'm going to use that powder just because I have a bunch of it. And it seems to work pretty well for me. So my load data for this is I've got a range for a 140 grain bullet. Um, the starting load is 61 and a half grains and the max load is 68 and a half. But again, we're only doing six different powder charges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load, uh, I'm gonna start at 63 and a half grains and go up in one grain increments all the way to 68 and a half grains. So the bullet for the load data that they are showing here on Shooter's Reference is a 140 grain Nosler boat tail. Uh, we don't know if this bullet is a hollow point boat tail or if it's Palmer tip boat tail or whatever. 
So their overall length is what they've got set here is 2.880 inches and the trim length is 2.015 inches. So you can see their velocity and pressure uh, from starting to maximum up to 2,995 feet per second. Again, this is a compressed load because this powder, it, it takes a lot of powder that, you know, as you can see, that's 10 grains of powder more than if we were using Rotumbo and it would get, you know, similar velocity. Um, so anyways, they used a test barrel with a length of 24 inches and a one and eight twist. My barrel on my rifle is 27 inches with a one and eight twist. So I may get more velocity than that. I may not. In my experience, I've actually seen less velocity out of this barrel than what you would expect based on, you know, their load data. And I think that, you know, maybe that has something to do with it being hand lapped and that sort of thing. I don't know, but uh, it seems to shoot a little bit slower. So I'm probably going to be running about 2950 at maximum, uh, at the maximum charge weight. So other than that, um, when I do this test, I've decided since, you know, the components I'm using are good, but they're not the best of the best. I mean, as far as you know, the rifle, I could have a different barrel, uh, arguably maybe a better barrel. I don't know. I mean, this thing shoots so good as it is. I don't, you know, shooting a half inch group consistently or being able to shoot 20 rounds into a half inch group is, that's pretty consistent. That's pretty tight shooting gun there. So we'll see. Um, I decided I'm actually going to do five of these graphs. So I'm going to load five rounds at each charge weight, starting with that 63 and a half grains and going up to 68 and a half grains. So I'm going to load five of each charge weight, and then I'm going to shoot five of these graphs, uh, one graph at you know after another. So I'll shoot six rounds, let the barrel cool, shoot the next graph six rounds, let the barrel cool and so on until I shoot five of these graphs. And we will actually, maybe I can overlay those and see a trend, and maybe we can actually see this positive compensation because chances are there, there may be one graph or something that we don't see any evidence of positive compensation. So I'm gonna shoot multiple graphs uh, with this setup and see if we can get some conclusive evidence say if three out of the five graphs show positive compensation then that's a majority you know rule there but there are you know but two graphs would also be a significant uh, significant data point saying that maybe it doesn't happen with this rifle you know or who knows I may shoot this whole thing and not find any level of positive compensation and what that would mean is is if my every bullet, my slower bullets started hitting higher as I went up in powder charge and every graph showed that. That would mean that my barrel is stiff enough and straight enough that it doesn't whip and there is no real need for positive compensation then. But, uh, which they did talk about that. If, uh, if the barrel is rigid enough, uh, you will not see this positive compensation. But for most guns, according to Tim, uh, there is some level of positive compensation that can be achieved. So that's what I want to do by shooting multiple graphs, is getting as much data as I can and getting as, you know, and actually seeing like, you know, one graph is going to tell you one thing and maybe another graph is going to tell you something different. So I want to see if they are consistently all saying the same thing or if they're saying different things and if they're all saying different things then that means that some component that I'm using is not is not going to be uh, perfect from one one piece to the next say it's the primer is not exactly the same every time or say it's the brass is not the same every time uh, 
you know, I bring that up because I'm using Norma brass. So the ammunition I've been shooting is this Norma Golden Target Match Ammo. And it shoots really, really well out of this rifle. It shoots so well that, you know, I've shot on three different occasions. I've shot a 20 round group that measured under a half inch. So that's 60 rounds total on three different occasions, three different days that this rifle has shot that ammunition, same ammunition uh, it has shot it and I have achieved groups that were smaller than a half inch with 20 rounds. So it's like shoot five at this target, let it cool for a little bit, shoot five more and do that four times and all 20 rounds end up in, in a half inch or less hole. So this ammunition for whatever reason just shoots amazingly well out of that rifle and even though it shoots a little slower than I think it should it shoot it's running about 2900 feet per second or so for a 143 grain um, and I would normally would expect that to be closer to 3000 or, or maybe even a little bit higher but again it just shoots so good there's no reason for me to like really want to load ammunition for this thing because this ammunition is not super expensive, and which is another really cool thing about it. But again, you could test that ammunition out of your own rifle and it may not shoot that well. It just happens to shoot really well for me. Um, <clears throat> I have loaded some am ammo in the past for the 6.5 PRC using some 145 grain Barnes match burners. I have not gotten them to shoot real well. I've gotten them to shoot about one minute of angle out of this gun, but I've not gotten them to shoot just super tight half minute groups or nothing yet. So I'm thinking maybe that's the Barnes match bringer. I've tried them in the past in 6.5 uh, Creedmoor and about the same thing. They shot about a minute, minute and a half out of the Creedmoor. Whereas I've had better results with just store bought ammo. Um, but other components like the 140 grain ELD match, I tend to get a little better results out of. So I'm going to use those and I'm going to sort them by overall length and get me 30 of those bullets that are exactly the same length. I'm going to get my 6.5 PRC cases. I'm going to trim them all get them all you know obviously resize them first and then trim them all and then sort those until I get 30 cases that are all the same weight uh, because that's really really the about the only thing you can do with brass to make sure that it's as close to you know from one piece to the next as you can um, so that's what I'm doing that's the testing that's going to be going on this week and we will go shoot this weekend and see how it goes um i did want to go out to the pipeline and shoot this weekend but and you know stretch out the browning rifle now that i've got it shooting really nice with the four with the 454 casul uh and the fixed 10 power scope i've got on it really wanted to take it out and see uh see how it does at a thousand but we're not going to be able to do that this weekend. Maybe next weekend. Maybe the next weekend. So this weekend, we're going to test for positive compensation. So I'm pretty positive about it. <laughs> uh, anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you watched that video with Eric Cortina and Tim Sellers. Uh, it's super, super cool. I recommend everybody watch it. Uh, when they really get into explaining how this works, it's pretty awesome. So let me know what you think, and uh, we will see you next time in the next video. Thanks for watching.